Hey guys, I've had many questions regarding how to be a great mentor and just do a video on mentorship. So I thought today I will share with you some tips and tricks that I've learned throughout my journey and still learning um, to be a mentor. And I think it's always a great thing that um, it's a great opportunity to be a mentor to those who uh, needs our help as well as just building that relationship. So here goes. Um, I would say the first thing is thank your mentee in terms of having that relationship with you. Um, I think they pick you for a reason. They see something that you can inspire them and also help them along the way. So it's a, a great start and great foundation. And I think the number one thing um, being a great mentor is having an open line of communications and setting realistic expectations. Um, for example, a mentorship can be a limited amount of time if you are if you are matched up through a formal program, um, for example, through your state or your local chapter or through an organization, and the mentee has a specific task that they want to um, finish out or finish a program, or it could be a casual, a casual relationship that you have find each other through other means and it might foster into a lifetime relationship. So it's really up to you, but have a check-in period how often you guys want to communicate. Um, so for example, myself, I have a mentee right now that I got matched up to a formal program and organization, and we meet every uh, every week on Friday at 9 a.m. Um, via phone. Of course, he uh, is in downtown, I'm in uh, West. So we're at least an hour apart from each other. So just to make it more convenient, we set up a phone call, a weekly phone call and touch base. And that could be very different from, uh, for you. If it's a year long program, then maybe once a month or once a quarter, and it could be through phone, face to face or email. I think whatever the way is, is the important thing is keeping the line of communication. And of course, um, be open to your mentee that when they do need your help, feel free to reach out. Um, these check-in are just for there, just so you have a, um, a set time to uh, check in with each other and more importantly for your mentees to have an opportunity to meet with you and talk and discuss with you But of course they should be uh, open to email you anytime if they um, if any needs or any question arise The other part is defining expectations. I think it's so crucial um, to have this first conversation this expectation clear out on that first conversation because sometimes it could be um, something they want to have a mentor to catch up on things and um, guiding them throughout their journey um, or it could be something more specifically helping them with a project or securing a job or whatever it is it's important to have the expectations and that uh, as a mentor you would know what you need to help guide them through this path um, really be able to offer support um, and I think the biggest thing is listen um, listen to the mentees in terms of their questions they may have concerns and I would say you would probably spend 80% listening and 20% offering advice because oftentimes I find that mentees tend to know what they need to do but they just wanting someone to reaffirm that and you want them to come up with their own um, set of actions instead of you tell them you should do this it's just like tell me what you think you should do or tell me what how you approach this problem and either affirm it guide them and i think um, from that standpoint you are fostering them to be, uh, continue to be successful and giving them um, the creativity and the flexibility to grow further Third is really um, on that first conversation is getting to know each other being and be um, personal, right? So building the relationship. So instead of the first re uh, conversation, get into the business, just really get to know them. So what are their hobbies? Uh, what are their uh, career goals? Um, what are some interesting things about them that others people may not know and vice versa um, for you to share some of your personal details um, that you, in terms of your career goals, travel goals, hobbies, just so you have some personal relationship um, established before you go into like the business of it. 
Um, and lastly, I would say is really stay positive. Um, as a mentor, I think uh, mentees can really gauge when you're being um, negative or condescending. So um, the biggest thing is be positive and continue to be there for them and really help them along the way, um, especially when they're struggling or in difficult situations. So being positive um, help with recognizing them, the achievements they have made thus far and looking forward to the next goals or milestone that they will hit um, as a mentor. And some other examples that I would say um, helping with the conversation and the relationship building is um, setting um, expectations in terms of, um, you know, you, the mentee's gonna be in the driving seat in terms of reaching out to you when they need additional guidance. Um, of course, every now and then you can check in with them, but of course, I know um, you may have a lot of other things that other uh, things will occupy your, your time. So just let them know that, hey, if you ever need my help, please reach out. Um, every now and then you can, of course, feel free to reach out to them as well. But in the uh, in um, most of the driving piece of it, the mentee should be the, the driving force. Um, in addition to get the most meaning out of the relationship, I would say um, offer the mentees to um, help in terms of CV review or give them articles or journals um, things to read up, especially pertaining to whatever questions or concerns they may have. And then when you guys do your check-in, go over the articles, go over the reading, or go over whatever um, concerns they may have. Um, in addition, just really be able to uh, get them to be involved with organizations. Um, I think that's such a huge, huge uh, piece that for, for for professional development for mentees to still stay involved. Um, many students tend to be very engaged during pharmacy school, but once um, you know they have a job, they tend to kind of uh, get uh, overwhelmed and also just absorb into their day-to-day -day functions that sometimes they lose sight and not stay uh, involved in organizations. And I think as a mentor, that is something that you can help them um, because stay involved is how they can help continue to network with uh, their colleagues or peers in um, other states or other or organizations or within um, um, their local state chapter. So um, regardless what it is, um, overall your responsibility as a mentor is to listen and to listen more and to provide them guidance when they need help and give them positive reinforcement um, on whatever situations that they, um, are, uh, that they are um, being faced with. And as a mentor, you're there for them when they need help. But of course, setting um, clear expectations that the mentees should initiate a lot of the conversation, a lot of the um, objectives and things for you to help and as a mentor, you are there um, for them and you serve as their role model. So I hope these tips will help you to become a successful mentor and continue to build a great relationship with them. And for those uh, that are currently mentors, please post uh, in the comment section on what you do that helps you to um, have a great mentor-mentee relationship. Thank you.